Okay, so find the slope so of the equation 5x plus y is equal to all right so for today's lesson class we will be discussing one more time the research techniques or uh instrument no remember the reason why we need to discuss this one because most of the error from your output or from your data is come from the instrument no or it comes from your instrument okay so what are the instruments that we use well most uh definitely survey questionnaire yan ang ginagamit natin and remember the non-sampling error that is because caused by the instrument. And the only way to correct the uh, instrument, no? Paano daw natin makukorek ang instrument? If we validate it, no? Pag binavalidate natin ang ating instrument, we can able to correct it, no? Or to avoid the error, all right? So now, going back with this lesson, research techniques or instrument. Researchers use various tools to help them streamline the process of gathering data. Okay? Itong ginagamit natin to gather data. Among those commonly used are questionnaires and survey documents. Okay? So by learning how to construct these tools yourself, you can make your research more accurate and easier to do. So this lesson will help you examine what these research tools are and how to establish their validity. So it makes sense. That's the reason why this is very important, no? Um, because this is how you analyze your data. And this is what we use to analyze your data, okay? So let's uh, move forward. Research instrument class is measuring device may be used to gather data in the study. The instrument may be researcher developed or it may be an adoption of an existing instrument or it may be an adapted instrument. Either or, you can use that class, no? But the dilemma that we are facing when we're using instrument made by others uh, or developed by others, no? Um, there are tendencies that, uh, not really tendencies, but you have to ask permission from the developer, okay? So um, since the development of research can take some time, Okay. A researcher may opt to adapt an existing okay. instrument. This may also increase the credibility of the study. All right? Yung credibility of the study, why not class you have to establish your own um, types of kinds of instrument and uh, try, excuse me, and, uh, and, and, and you have to make sure that that instrument will align to the study that you are exploring about, right? So, um, hmm. this may also increase the credibility of the study. That's important in research class. We wanted to make sure that we, our research has this credibility, para natin ma-achieve yan, of course, uh, to avoid the biases and uh, to avoid error in your instrument and uh, using the right instrument as well, okay? So, to do so, permission of the owner of the instrument can be sought. However, just like a researcher develop instrument, the adapted instrument will have to go through a process to determine the validity and reliability. I was able to explain what's the difference with adoption with an O on adoption with an A, no? Um, adoption with an A, we have to alter it, no? There are some questions that you have to alter it, alter it to align the, uh, uh, to align maybe the questions um, that is applicable to your own study. So it's good because uh, the, the instrument that you use was designed, you know, or uh, is designed no, to your uh, study, okay? So interview schedule, what does it mean? Um, interview schedule class, it contains a set of questions that the interviewer will ask the interviewees. So according to the order that they appear in the schedule, as well as answer options, which the interviewer reads to the interviewees, quantification of the responses is considered in making the schedule. Um, well, what is that? It's not an alley, no? especially done numerically to facilitate um, encoding notes. It's, it's, it's not an alley. What is it? 
Wait now. I took you so Okay, only four guys got the correct answer. I think three. Usually, okay, so sorry about that. I have to. Correct. I, I need to correct that. Like I'll take a quick one. What is the value of Review to your class of points for effective delivery. I'm talking about it. Especially, or what is it? Okay. okay, so usually done numerically to facilitating coding. What I'm trying to say here, class, is just. You have to use it um, numerically, no? Talagyan natin ng coding. So always remember, class, interview schedule must be prepared. And uh, you have to consider the uh, the quantification, meaning the number of the interviewees uh, that you can accommodate within a day or within a time, within a time frame that you assign uh, to that particular schedule. No? Uh, bakit mahalaga yan? Siyempre, uh, kailangan kasi structured to, no? And you have to prepare your questions and uh, um, of course, you have to put the coding on your on your questions. Why is that for? Para pag na-encode natin, no? pag nailagay natin sa system natin, it, uh, there is a fax or a record that we have from the interviewees. Pwede ba yung punto ko, class, no? Parang nag-interview ka, pero uh, kailangan nilang sagutan yung mga questionnaire na meron ka. And uh, when you ask that question, of course, there's a coding. What's the purpose? Maglalagay tayo ng coding to minimize the time, okay? So that you can accommodate much of the uh, interviewees. That makes sense, right? So, questionnaire as a tool uh, to gather data, you know what class the use of a questionnaire is uh, usually resorted to, no? We have a two basic types of the questionnaires or questions may be used in conducting survey. We do have the open-ended, closed-ended questions, no? When, we, when is the time that you will say that this is an open-ended question? These are used when there are many possible responses to your particular problem. Respondents may answer freely and uh, provide a detailed response to a query. So, well, this is giving you a freedom, not really you, but your respondents. No, you are as a, you are you are a researcher, and of course, what you are giving to your respondents is a freedom to answer whatever perceptions, ideas, experience to the questions you've given to them, okay? So, hayaan mo sila na sagutin yon na naayon sa kanilang karanasan, ayan, pinagalog ko lang, at sa kanilang, um, ano ba, pananaw tungkol sa question na ibinigay mo, okay? So, um, for example, the questions, what is your reason for uh, joining extra extracurricular activities? Of course, you are not controlling them, but you are giving them a free way uh, um, um, uh, a freely or a freedom to answer that particular questions. It can be I enjoy the activity or I have nothing to do during lesser time. Maganyan yung possible na sagot ng class. And secondly, we do have the uh, open-ended questions are easy to construct, but I'm sorry, uh, open-ended questions class are easy to construct but difficult to analyze. Just like what I said because it was not organized as close-ended questions as it is because when you are using an open-ended question it's like an essay that you are measuring the amount or uh, what you call this one the uh, um the idea coming from different people no well on the close-ended question class it's much easier why it say so or why i say so uh close-ended questions class have limited responses which are predetermined, such as gender, which is limited to male or female, or your level, which may be limited to, say, grade 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So close-ended questions class are more difficult to construct, but the good thing about it is 
uh, easier to tabulate and analyze naman. They're also easier to answer by the respondents since the, you are providing them an options, no? Ang um, close-ended question, nagbibigay ka ng options, so one is possible answer for that uh, particular question. But the bottom line, when you have a close-ended question, regardless of they have the different opinions towards the thing, you are giving them an option, what uh, a kind of option that is available to that particular question, okay? So... We do have a types of closed-ended questions. What are the types of closed-ended questions? We have the Cotonous questions. What, what do you mean by that? The Cotonous question class, do not be confused, is still under um, under closed-ended questions. It's also giving you an option, but you just have to choose one from the given two questions. No? For example, require respondents to answer two-point questions like yes or no, True or false, satisfied or unsatisfied, something like that. When you are asking these two questions with a comparison, I, not really comparison, but choosing which one, no, like using or, no, ginagamitan natin ng or, yes or no. Mamimili ka lang ng isa sa dalawa, no. Ang tawag natin dyan is a dichotomous question. All right? Now, if you are giving a lot of choices naman, kung maraming choices naman ang gusto mo, eh di multiple choice gamitin mo, di ba? Kung gusto mo ng close-ended questions pero marami kang option na gustong ibigay, eh di multiple choice. No? It can be A, B, C, D, E, so something like that. No? Five questions, I'm sorry, five options. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, the point is multiple choice questions, it requires respondent to choose one among the different choices enumerated, right? So, kung marami kang nilatag dyan ng mga sagot, isa lang ang pwedeng piliin ng ating respondents, alright? So, for instance, for the questions, how how many hours, no? or how hours many per day? How many hours should be not... Let's make the typo. Mas correct lang agad para... Okay na tayo. Ayan. Okay. How many hours per day do you spend studying? So questions like how many hours per day do you spend studying? Although you have something on your mind, uh, not even studying. Or um, not even spending my time for studying what's that for <laughs> so you don't have any choice if that option in your mind is not available in the option right so for example here they are giving you five choices like less than one hour so most probably estimated for the time probably less than one hour you don't have any other choice than less than one hour even though you're not studying no um what else? One to less than two hours. One to less than two hours. Or two to less than three hours. Three to less than four hours and four hours or more. So you are giving a five option to that. All right? So, ang, tulad ng sinabi ko, ang disadvantage ng dito, plus paano naman kapag wala dyan yung option, no? Uh, most probably go to the closest one. Okay? Or choose to the closest one. Okay? Another multiple uh, sorry, another example of the close ended questions is ra rank order. Okay, so remember the rank order questions class is require respondents to indicate their order or preference from a list of options. Sempre pag ikaw ang magpapa survey, may listahan ka na kaya nga sa close ended questions, meron ka ng listahan na gusto mong i arrange ni customer according to their favorites or according to the list favorite no yung pinaka favorite nila tsaka sa pinaka hindi masyadong favorite no so anong tawag natin diyan rank order so ikaw ang magpo-provide niya no again pag paparang order ka nakadepende pa rin yan sa study na ini-explore mo or sa research mo okay so well in order to justify what wrong what rank order is all about this is require respondents to what indicator order of preference no kanilang preference from a list of option to illustrate Ganito ang gagawin natin dyan, the respondents may be asked to rate. No? Lalagyan natin ng rate or i-rate natin a given list of fruit juice according to your preference 
with one as the most preferred and six as the least uh, list preferred. So the list contains apple juice, banana juice, grape juice, mango juice, orange juice, and pineapple juice. So now you have to number it according to your favorite. So one is 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 the uh one as the most preferred and one is not uh, i'm sorry six as the least preferred so you have to choose or you have to rank them according to your preference Ganun lang tayo mag -rank order. okay so rating scale naman class somehow parang kinag parang may pagka-rank din kasi nagre-rate tayo no pero dito hindi natin siya ilalagay kung pino, kung sino yung pinaka most no yung yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng ng most, i-arrange mo sa sa pinaka-most mo at sa pinaka-ayaw mo, no? Or in a number mo siya ng pinaka-gusto mo sa pinaka-ayaw mo. Depende kung ano yung pinaka-highest point, right? Now, the rating scale naman class is requires the respondent to rate their agreement or a disagreement, right? With a particular statement. Like for example, the scale uses Likert scale where interpretation can be from strongly agree to strongly disagree, a great extent to least extend or uh, very often to never no yan yung mga palantandaan natin class sa mga rating skill your satisfaction your um your agreement or how most probably Likert scale yung yung sukat kung gaano mo ka gusto or gaano ka sang ayon sa isang bagay okay ganun yon and although we have a five point scale may be used there are usually even choices such as tagamit tagamit eh, no Good, fair, poor, very poor. So to avoid the choice of selecting a middle option, pwede natin gawin ganito. For example, in a survey instrument, uh, respondents ask to rate the food in the school canteen. Yan. So the option one are very good, number two good, three just okay, and four poor. Okay. So another example, respondents may be asked to rate their agreement with a statement on study habits such as I listen attentively in class. Respondents may place a check mark on a scale of 1 to 8 where 8 signifies strongly agree and 1 is strongly disagree. Kuha niyo ba yung pagkakaiba ng rating scale na parang par ay yung rank at rating parang magkakapareho lang. Pero dito class ang tatandaan niyo dito. Ang ginagamit natin sa rating scale is more of the Likert scale. Your um, satisfactory no, to, to a certain things. Yeah. Ang tawag natin dyan is rating, rating scale. If you try to look at the, the, the table on on uh, uh, the scale on your note, uh, sorry, on your book, no? may kita mo dun yung good, delicious, delicious pleasant, healthy, no? uh, naka, ano yun, apat yun, di ba? Tapos sa pinakadulo nun, may bad, tasteless, and pleasant, and healthy. So opposite of good, bad. Opposite of delicious, tasteless. Opposite of pleasant and pleasant. Opposite of healthy and healthy. Now, there is a check there. No? Meron kang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 na naguhit. And then, you will try to check check them. No? Ngayon, kung gaano siya kalapit, kung gaano siya kalapit sa good, ibig sabihin, andoon yung uh, uh, andoon ka lapit sa good yung, yung, yung lasa ng pagkain sa kanti. No? Pag malapit naman siya sa bad, medyo negative na no kasi parang malapit na sa sa sa, sa bad taste ng uh, ng ng kanti no kung 7 ang buhit na yon tingnan niyo sa book niyo class ha hindi ko na yan sinama kasi hindi naman natin isasama sa exam yan okay uh, na magaganyan kayo no so ang ang tendency niyan class is a uh, uh, magche-check ka doon so kung ano yung pinakamalapit doon sa 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 sa, sa uh, pinaka good then yun yung mana uh, Yun yung pinaka ano okay no pinaka malapit pinaka powerful doon sa ano sa sa dalawang pinigay ko no sa 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 positive and negative okay so we do have the different types of um, rating scale we do have the semantic differential scale so example ba ginagamit ang semantic differential scale it's variation of the rating scale where the semantic differential scale requires respondent to check the responses between two dalawa ha, two extreme values at the opposite end of the scale ah sa sema sorry kaya pala nalito ako sa semantic differential scale pala yung uh, na ano ko so sa rating scale pala class yung tulad na sinabi ko kanina yung uh, maglalagay lang tayo ng 1 to 8 
uh, strongly agree and strongly disagree. Okay? So, sa ito kong advance. Okay? So, sa semantic class, do natin ipapasok yung maglalagay natin ng check, no? Kaya nga sa semantic differentials, uh, differential scale, no? So, I was jump up to this right away. Sorry about that. No? So, i-check natin. Yung katulad na sinabi ko kanina class, no? Na mag meron tayong good and bad or powerful to weak yan. Uh, do not lalagyan ng check. Okay? Doon tayo maglalagay ng check. Kung sino yung mas malapit, yun yung pinaka malapit doon sa opposite na bad. No? Halimbawa kung seven yung line, okay? tapos dito yung good, dito yung bad. No? So dahil seven yan, seven natin yung middle, right? And then after that, neutral lang yung seven, and then, ay yung gitna. And then after that, we will be checking on is nearer to that uh, particular description. So kung nasa good yan malapit, no? kunwari nasa pangalawa, no? good pa din siya na malapit siya sa good. Medyo hindi pa satisfied uh, ng todo-todo, no? but okay na, right? Okay? So, another example is the staple scale. Another scale is similar in nature in the staple scale. It is a uni unipolar rating scale numbered from uh, negative n to positive n without a neutral or zero point. The scale is usually presented vertically with the adjective in the middle and respondents are required to choose one. It is used when the researcher finds it difficult to find bipolar adjectives. Okay, so data obtained are analyzed in the same manner as semantic differential data to rate the satisfaction of the students with the cleanliness of the school. So ang gagawin lang natin dito, class, magsi-circle lang tayo. Kung alin dito ang pinaka, ano natin, ang pinaka gusto natin. Kung Masa kung nalinisan ka sa school and then nasa positive ka, no? positive 3, positive 4, no? pero kung medyo unsat uh, unsatisfied ka with, with the cleanliness of that particular school, then most probably you can put or you can choose among the negative. No? Okay? So pwede siyang above and below neutral. No? Respondents may be in circle. Okay, tapos na yan. Last class, we do have the constant sum questions before I end this lesson. Uh, constant sum questions class require respondents to enter num numeric data expressing the importance allocated by the respondents to the set option. Data collect collected are ratio data. For instance, students may be asked to enter the amount spent daily. So assuming the allowance is 200. So the question may be how much do you spend daily for each item? Ito na ito, adali nito class now. Ginagamit natin ito sa pagbabudget. Constant sum question ang tawag natin ito with, with, with the application of, you know, um, arithmetic, ganun lang. Okay? So transportation, magkano ba? Magkano ba, yung, uh, magkano ba yung kailangan mo? So dahil 200 yan class, you have to disseminate the uh, 200 or distribute that 200 to the most, uh, ano ba tawag natin dyan, necessity, di ba, yung mga necessity. Halimbawa, sa transportation mo, ilan ang kailangan mo, merienda mo, ilan, sa lunch mo, ilan, sa ilan ang savings mo, so dapat magtototal siya ng 200. Okay, madidivide mo siya ng 200. Or, mag madidivide, matototal mo siya ng 200 kapag tinotal mo na lahat ng division of uh, money that you have no? from that particular uh, necessities that you have. So, all right. So, I think that's it for now. Do you have any questions so far? Ayan na. Sort of review lang yon. Okay. May questions? O baka violent reaction? <laughs> Safe ako. Hindi niyo ako magagal. Right? Okay. So, let's pray. Alexis, do you have question? No, sir. Okay, so let's pray. Okay, Alexis, uh, closing prayer. Lord, um, um, let's go ahead and fill the presence of the Lord and the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, salamat po sa mga natutunan namin sa uh, araw na ito. Sana po ang mga natutunan namin sa buong, um, buong second grading ay ma magamit namin para masagutan ng aming mga exam sa susunod na na test namin. Sana po gabayan niyo po kami sa paggawa ng aming research at sana po bigyan niyo po kami ng pag-asa para magkaroon pa po ng magandang kinabukasan sa in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, amen. So goodbye and thank you, class. See you next year at good luck sa exam niyo, class. Bye-bye. Bye, sir.